So, um, hello guys, today we're going to be doing part one of my How to Make a Baldy Fan Game series. Now, the engine we'll be using, okay, um, and by the way, um, this is for How to Make a Baldy Fan Game that isn't a mod, but completely custom, so yeah. So, guys, um, yeah, this is part one of the How to Make a Bali Fan game series. The engine, the game engine we're going to be using is, um, Construct, yeah. The game engine we're going to be using is Construct. So, if you ever heard of Construct 3, it's this really cool online game engine. You don't even have to download it. You just... So... I'll probably put the link to this in the description. But yeah. So, when you get to um, this website, or this part of the website, using this link right here, just press Launch Construct 3. Then press launch the guided tour. Let me see my screen recorder. Hey guys, don't you just love when people are like recording something and like they do this? It looks super cool. But um, anyways guys, let's get started. Welcome to Construct. Well done for picking a powerful and easy to use game creation tool. Take a guided tour. Start building your first game with step-by-step -step instructions. You won't believe how quick and easy it is. Not now. Because I'm going to be showing you how to use Construct. So. We're going to click New. Then you just put the name of your Baldy fan game. Now, the name of my Baldy fan game will be Brainy Brainiacos Basics. Yeah, Brainiacos Basics. Huh. So, let's create. Now, so we got all this. So I'm gonna explain to you how to use Construct right now. Um, oh, let me just sign into my account. Um. So. We're going to, um, you know what, let's see over here, um, so this is the information about your project over here, yeah, 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 you can change it, you can change it, so this is the version right here, so whenever you make a new version of your, um, project, you can just change it like this. Now you can just change stuff, as you know. Yeah, you can just change the number like that. And now, I'm going to explain to you how to use the right side of Construct. So you just basically click on things over here. So a layout in Construct is like a level, or a scene, or a place of objects. Yeah. Place of ob place of objects. And a an event sheet is basically the code for a layout. So let's start making our baldy game. So I feel like first we want to start making our protagonist well not the protagonist, the 
the end, the, the antagonist, the, the whoever, the teacher, Brainiac, uh, and I'm gonna go into Paint 3D to make this. Won't take long. Paint 3D, um, so if you didn't know, Microsoft made a 3D version of Microsoft Paint, and it's really cool. It's like the easiest 3D modeling software. It's like Blender, but super, super duper easy. So, um, you can use, um, other 3D modeling programs. In fact, you don't really have to make it a 3D model. You can just draw the characters if you want, but I'm going to do it like this for my Bully Fan game. So, for your Baldi game, you can have as many notebooks as you please. And who knows, you might want to make it harder than Baldi's Basics and have like 101 or something. Okay, I'm going to start doing this faster because I don't want me making a character to take up most of the tutorial. You just, you know, it's not that big of a problem because you can just like skip in the video to like where I start doing other things. Yeah. Mm, I'm not sure I need to explain how to use Paint 3D because I feel like I'm kind of explaining it by using it. So guys, tell me if you want a part two in the in the like. So if you need more help from me, just like like go in the comment section and tell me if you want a part two. Tell me if you want a part two. Tell me if you want a part two. I can imagine you guys probably do want a part two. Brainiac Go feels pretty finished, not gonna lie. I'm gonna um, go to Canvas, Canvas over here. I'm gonna turn on Transparent for Canvas. Now, I'm gonna save our 3D model as an image. Boom. And I'm going to save this as Brainiaco, because that's the name of the teacher. The teacher, teacher. Brainiaco. So, don't worry. It's not much longer until we finally get back into the actual Construct 3. So this is Ditherit.com. So basically Ditherit allows you to make things look like how they do in Baldi's Basics. Like, you know how in Baldi's Basics, the characters look like 3D models, except they're like pixelated. That's what Ditherit does. It makes it look like that, basically. There's different kind of modes and stuff you can do, and a lot of options, but I'm not going to mess with them. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to press dither. Okay, pretty good. Pretty good dither. So now we got Brainiac Echo. So now we're going to put Brainiac Echo into Construct. So in order to 
make a new object in construct. You just need to like right click literally anywhere. Like right click literally anywhere and then you'll see this options menu. We're gonna click, you have to click insert new object to insert a new object or make a new object if you don't know what the word insert means. Now, since we want um, Brainiaco to be a 3D model, obviously, we need to pick 3D shape, because he's 3D. So, when you're making anything in Construct, and if you want it, like if you're making anything in Construct and you want it to be 3D, then pick 3D shape, okay? So you might notice my mouse is this little plus icon. So I just need to place this, I just need to click while I'm on the plus icon, wherever I want this 3D model to be. We're making the teacher, by the way. Brainiaco. So. Now, so these are like the different sides of the 3D model. So these are like the different sides. So right now I'm on the left side, which is where we would see him. Go into my files. Pick Brainiac, my favorite Brainiac. And just using the um, zoom out and zoom in tool. And there we go, we got Brainiac. If you want to make him like bigger and not have all the space around here, you just got to press this crop icon and boom. Make them a little bit smaller here. Okay. Now we've got Brainiac. Now let's right click here, insert a new object. This time it's going to be the player. We're going to make the player a sprite. So you can make the player look like an actual person, but I'm just going to make him an arrow. If you're making a first person Baldi game, then you won't, you won't really, um, need to, like, make the player something other than an arrow, you know, you know. Now we've got a player, but he doesn't work yet. So, if you don't know, in Construct, we have this thing called behaviors, which are, well, behaviors. They're preset behaviors that we don't have to code. All we gotta do is click on the object, and here, to the left place over here, gotta click behaviors, Click Add New Behavior, and then you click Car. Turn While Stopped? Yeah, we want that on. Oh, and by the way, this is where you change, like, the, um, things, the options. These are the, um, settings of your player's controls. So here we can change the max speed, but I'm not going to change it because I like 350. So I just pressed the play button. So now we can like see what our game looks like right now. And if you see, so if you use the arrow keys, then as you can see, we can move now. But you might be wondering, hey, CYS Entertainment, why isn't this 3D? Well, we're going to add 3D in just a second, using construct code, or an event sheet. So, it says this is an empty event sheet, which is very, very true, as we, 
because we haven't added any code here yet. So we need to code the 3D. Now, don't worry, this definitely is a lot less longer than you think it is. So, to add an event, which is basically the first part of a line of code in an event sheet, just click Add Event. So we're basically making a condition for an action to take place. So basically, after the condition, we're going to make an action. So after that, it would be like if the condition is true, then we do the action. It's basically like if this is true, then do that. Like an if then. So, oh, almost forgot. Sorry, guys. We've got to add a 3D camera first. Huh, embarrassment from forgetting something. Don't you know how that feels, guys? Every tick? Yeah. So, in, in case you didn't get that and I went too fast, I'm going to do it again. Add event, system, next, every tick, next. So every tick, which means every second, 3D camera, we're adding an action, we're adding an action, an action that happens if the condition is true. So 3D camera next with a parallel to layout. And then we just want sprite or whatever you named your player character dot x and whatever you named your player character dot y. Then we want to do sprite.angle. Also, camera Z. Camera Z is, um, that's, um, you don't want to change that because it's basically how high up the player will seem. We want to keep that at 10 for this to work. So now this. If I'm correct, then this should work, and now, use the arrow keys, we're in 3D. We're in the third dimension. A whole entirely different dimension, and it really did not take that long. So, now what we want to do is... We want to make the floors. We want to make the floor. So we're going to insert a new object here. And it's right click to insert a new object, by the way, if you forgot already. Um, so now we want to pick not 3D shape, but tiled background. Then, so this is where I want it, so I'm going to click here. Now we're just going to make our floor, which is going to take two seconds for me, because I just, I just kind of want it to be this color all around. Then we got to stretch this out, and uh-oh! It looks like our player character is lost. Well, we just gotta make the Z elevation of this floor negative one. And now, we can see our player again. So, we can just stretch this out as much as we want.
Oh, and by the way, you use these like um, slider thingies to move around the editor. You know what I'm talking about? Like when I'm scrolling right here. Now let's test it out and see if there's floors. Great. We have floors now. You want to extend, um, like, how long? You might have guessed this already, but if you want to extend, like, how long the floors are, like, how big the floors are, then you just kind of gotta do some like this, like this, like this, and this. Now I want to make the walls. So right click to insert new object. And then we want the walls to be 3D, so we're going to pick 3D shape. And so now we can make the wall. So I want the walls to be gray, like like in Baldy, like in the basics of Baldy, like like in his basics, which are very very basic, by the way. Let me just kind of spread this around, and since I want um all of it to be gray, we can just copy and paste this to the other sides. I'm gonna add like the um this. So I'm just making the walls, making the walls. I'm using this line tool to do this by the way. I think this wall looks really bad, but I'm going to use it anyway. So I'm just going to copy and paste this on all the sides. We use this thing right here to paste. And we use this thing to copy. Great, now we have a wall. So let me tell you what we want to do now. So now we want to make the wall solid, right? Solid means you can't go through it. Like a solid wall in real life. You can't go through a wall in real life, you know? So we want to make this wall solid. So to do that, we're going to have to go to the behaviors I mentioned earlier. You know, remember when I talked about behaviors? Add new behavior. Solid. Which is exactly what we want. Let's make a description here. So great. Now let's test this out and now we have a working wall. You can see we can't go through it. Yeah, we can't go through. That's nice, right? This is what we all wanted, right? Yeah. But if you see here, if we try to stretch it out, it looks like that. That looks like Crap. Right? Undo that. So, what we have to do to make it look normal when we stretch it, we gotta make another tiled background. So, 
we basically are just going to have to paste the wall texture. If you don't know, um, a texture is a sprite or like basically art for a game. Um, yeah, so we're just going to paste it in here. Then we're gonna do the crop tool. Guys. And then and then and then then Okay, I'm 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 gonna stop saying then because I'm kinda hungry guys. I'm I'm being in the way, I guess. Well, let me turn my mouse back on, guys. It's, it's glitchy. X out. So now, we just... See, we can stretch this out. But that doesn't mean we want to use this as the wall. Because it's just going to be on the floor then. And we don't... We don't really want that, right? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me show you show you what I'm talking about. See, it's it's just kind of on the floor like that. We don't want that, do we? No, of course we don't want that. We want them to be solid and not on the floor like that. So we got to go back to this 3D wall. Go down, scroll down here. Then you'll find use object object image for faces. So you just gotta click these little dots. Then pick tile background two or whatever that like whatever you named that floor wall. I'm correct, which I should be, or the whole universe would collapse, this should work. So, now, as you guys can um, see, we can look at the wall now and it's normal. But wait a minute, the whole reason we did that was to make it so that we could, we could stretch it out without it looking weird. So let's see if that works. Well, see guys, see guys, when we stretch it out, it doesn't look weird. And we can stretch it out as much as we want. So in order to copy and paste an object in Construct, you just gotta right click on it, and then press copy, and then you can just Paste it. Oh, and over here is where you can just get the items, like, you can just get the objects like this. You just kind of drag them into the scene. Oh, I, I grabbed the floor wall by mistake. Let me... Um, yeah. We can rotate this like this. So now we can have it to be over here. We can also do this and this. Guys, if you need help, if you need help, don't be scared to ask me in the comment section. I will make a follow up video if you need help on this. So right now I'm just gonna be making a sort of test map. Let me X out of that. Stretch this. We're just making a sort of test map to test our Baldi games mechanics and wall mechanics. Oh, 
you might notice that it's all going gray now or white or whatever when we scroll over here. That's because the layout isn't big enough. So we're going to have to click on layout, then make it bigger. That should be bigger now. Well, it's only a little bigger. I don't think I changed it enough. Let me just there we go. That's way bigger. We can also change the um height. <laughs> Sorry guys, I was just singing something. Pretty goofy tutorial, I guess. The person who's tutorialing you and educating you just kind of singing away and having fun when education is a serious thing. Pretty goofy tutorial, right guys? Lol. Well, Anyways, we have these two rooms where we would like to place our notebooks. Two rooms, two rooms. These are where we would normally place our notebooks. Well, we don't really have them as rooms yet. They're just kind of holes in the wall, in the walls. So we're just gonna. Rotate that, move it down here, so let's look now, we now have two rooms, if you're wondering why I went all blue, it's because I selected the floor, so let's test it out. Everything should be working just how I want it, and probably how you guys want it too. So now we have two rooms. And the final thing, well, I think, yeah, two of the final things that we are going to cover in this video, the two final things that we're going to cover in this video are doors, and, um, and, um, hold on, let me remember, oh yeah, how to change the color of the roof, because we have a white roof right now, it's kind of in a, the school is in a white void right now.
So the first thing of those two that we're going to be covering is how to change the roof. So we just click on layer zero and then change background color to whatever you want the roof color to be, which I want it to be this brownish color. Now let's try it. And as you can see, this should work. Now we have a brown roof. I forgot what I forgot what to do. We do, we do. We have a brown roof now. Now we're gonna make the doors. So we're just gonna right click, insert new object. 3D shape because we want the door to be 3D. Place it here. Now we will make door. Gonna remove the sides that we don't want. So, now we have a door that you can go through, but maybe you don't want it like this. Maybe we, maybe you want an opening animation. Well, I can help you with that. I can help you with that, most certainly. So, we will cover making the door opening animation in the next video, but right now we do have this little, um, we do have a door. It's not, <laughs> it wasn't a troll, guys, it was not a troll. I said we would do a door today. And we did do a door. I'm just going to copy and paste the door here, too. By the way, um, if you still don't know somehow, if you still don't know somehow, in order to change the names of objects, you, got, you just got to do this. So, you know, we named it Brainiac. Anyways, you want to sa save your Construct 3 project as the name of your Construct 3 project, or what you want to save it as. Brainiac goes basics. And as you can see, we have now saved our project. We have now saved this version of our game. We will also cover how to make a title screen in the next video. Anyways, goodbye guys.